Have you ever gone to declutter and have great intentions? And then when you go to do it, you suddenly have this feeling of overwhelm and feel completely stuck and frozen? Me too. These are what I like to call mental roadblocks or decision fatigue. Hello, I am Bethany and here on my channel, I love to inspire mothers to overcome some of life's obstacles by showing them how to simplify. And today I want to bring you along to show you my journey on how I was able to overcome these hurdles, obstacles, or roadblocks. So one day I was sitting there with all of my stuff, feeling extremely overwhelmed, wondering why I was having such a difficult time letting things go. That is when I realized that I was attached to the items instead of the memories they carried. Like when I spent $300 on this camera back in 08, but it only has five megapixels, or when my husband bought me a special Christmas gift I never wear. Or maybe thinking I'll use an item one day and forget about it. Or things I spent a lot of money on but never end up using. Somehow I ended up associating getting rid of these items with disrespecting the people who gave them to me or the memories they hold. Either way, all this stuff piling up in my home started causing me a great deal of stress in my life. And that is when I had enough. So maybe you've reached your breaking point and you can relate to my story in the sense of the emotional and sentimental feelings, which are by far the hardest part of decluttering. So how do we get past all this? Well, what has helped me is a mindset shift. Like what is the point of decluttering when we don't even know why we're doing it? So let's look at some reasons. Numerous studies have documented the negative effects of household clutter. It affects our mental and physical well-being, which can leave us anxious, stressed, or even depressed. Studies also show that cortisol levels, which is our stress hormone, are higher in those of us with cluttered homes. So when we look at the negative effects that clutter has on our lives, we can begin to see that everything we choose to keep is actually taking from us. Clutter is such a thief. It can steal our time, our energy, our space, and even breed discontentment, as well as affect our finances. Now let's reverse this and say we declutter. What do we get? We get more time, more space, more energy, more money, and we are more content, which can also mean we clean less, organize less, have less stress, and have more time to implement systems and habits, which are routines that will help our homes run smoother. Peter Walsh said, let your home be the antidote to stress, not the cause of it. And I could not agree more. Now that you have some valid reasons as to why to declutter and you understand your reasons and feel more motivated, you should be ready to get past the overwhelm and ready to start your journey. I'm gonna help you do that right now. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do to get past the declutter overwhelm is just follow these rules. No big deal, just make sure you follow every single one and you'll be on your way. But in all honesty, I would recommend that you start with a visualization. Visualize what you want your future area to look like. If you're unsure, I would recommend you go online and browse the internet check out your favorite stores. I personally love Pinterest and I'm also a huge fan of Magnolia. I found when I was looking on Pinterest that I am very drawn to warm, white, cozy backgrounds with pillows and blankets. And then I add pops of color here and there with furniture or pillows or rugs. Another thing you wanna do is be realistic. This is a journey that has taken me five years thus far. I'm still on it. I still have things that I'm going through and decluttering. So with being realistic, we, we remember that Rome wasn't built in day. This takes time. Give yourself grace, lots of it. So now I wanna share some tips with you that have helped me tremendously with the actual process of decluttering. There are a lot of different ways out there to do this, but I like to stick with the simplest way and recommend the three box system. Trash, donate, and relocate. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is grab three boxes. One for trash, you can substitute this with a garbage bag, which may be easier. Another box for your donations, 
and the third box for items to relocate in your home. Now, since we're starting small to avoid overwhelm, we want to use the snowball effect. Just like a snowball starts small but gets larger when you add more snow, so will our declutter journey as we gain momentum over time. A lot of people like to start in the kitchen or closet, but if that is too much for you, just start with a drawer you use every day, which will give you instant gratification and motivate you to continue. Another way the snowball effect works is by setting a timer each day for when you declutter. Start with five minutes, then you can do 10 the next day, then 15 or 20 and so forth. Now, if you want to remember something you're getting rid of, you can always just take a picture of it. And don't forget to document this journey. Take before and after pictures so you can celebrate your successes. I'd also recommend listening to music, which always makes things more fun and makes the time pass quickly. Pro tip, if you have an item that you're unsure whether or not you're ready to let go, just put it in a box and place it up in the attic for a month. Then after the month is up, go back and revisit the item and see how you feel. But don't forget about it. Since you're already decluttering and putting the hard work in, I bet you could really benefit by putting systems in place next and can learn about the ones I have in place in my next video, which are super life changing. And if you've enjoyed today's video, please give my video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. <laughs>